Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at Seven Ronin from Badger's Nest. Now, this is actually the original European version of the game, and is the full version of the game, so I'm going to do a review of it. However, it is going to get a new release soon from Gray Fox Games, so I thought it was pretty apropos to review it at this point. I'm not sure what the changes are going to be, but I'm pretty sure mostly everything is going to be ported over to the new North American version, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. And basically what this is, it's a two-player asymmetrical game where your goals are different on each side and how you play is also different as well for the most part and it's based off of uh, the the theme is one of my favorite themes from like anything ever movies tv shows books anime whatever the case might be and that's the theme of seven samurai like the classic kurosawa film uh which is basically a small village uh that has very little uh going for it very little meager food stuffs for the long winter is beset by a group of bandits who come and take their fill every year uh but the Village Chief says, I've had enough, and scrapes together whatever meager coinage that they have in order to hire some samurai to protect them. But what they end up with is a bunch of uh, disloyal ronin, uh, this ragtag team of fighters who um, want to take whatever the villagers can offer them in order to protect against these bandits. Now, in the case of Seven Ronin in particular, it's actually a clan of ninja, highly trained, so it's a little bit of a different spin on the tail, but you get the idea. There's been several other board games based on this theme. I haven't played, so I can't comment on them, but I can comment on Seven Ronin. So let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played, and then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Seven Ronin is a competitive, asymmetrical game for two players. One player will take control of the Ninja Clan and be known as the Attacker, and the other player will take control of the Seven Ronin protecting the village and be known as the Defender. To win the game, the Attacker needs to either kill the Seven Ronin or occupy five of the ten village areas. The Defender must either eliminate all Ninja Markers from the village and the Attacker's reserve, or hold out and stave off defeat until the end of the eighth round. The setup of the game is simple. A main village board is placed between the two players. This board is split into 10 sections, surrounding a middle section called the green, which is never considered part of the village technically. We'll get back to that later. Each player takes their own personal planning board that corresponds to the main village board, and a screen to place in front of it to hide their movements until the time is right. The attacker takes 40 ninja cubes to start, with the rest forming the stock. The cubes she takes at the beginning are left outside the screen and therefore public knowledge, but only for now. The defender takes all seven of the ronin tiles and lays them out. Every ronin has a different amount of damage they can take before they die, and every one of them has a different special ability. We'll talk about these after you get more context for what the game is like. Finally, the round tracker is placed at round one, which makes sense of course, but I mention it because each round has a second larger number on it, ranging from three to five. This is the threat level for the current round, and it's important for the attacker's deployment, as you'll hear in a moment. Also, the skull on rounds 4 through 8 indicates that some ninjas starve, and the attacker must remove a marker from her reserve at the beginning of each of these rounds. Seven Run consists of 8 rounds, with each one split into 3 phases. Phase 1 is planning, consisting of deployment and then revealing your movements to the enemy. Each player will use their planning board to deploy their markers with specific limitations for each side. The attacker will secretly take all of his markers into hand. She can deploy markers to a number of different village areas equal to the current threat level, and in fact must always put out at least as many markers as the number of the current round or the current threat level, whichever is lower. Each area, however, has an area limit, which is the maximum number of markers you can place in a given area. There are stones depicted on your planning board to remind you of this, and the artwork on the village board subtly gives you spots to put those markers. Regardless of the threat level, the attacker can always deploy an extra ninja to the green, which represents the ninja clan infiltrating the village. As I said, this does not count as a village area for any other purpose, including winning the game. However, if one or more ninja are present here at the start of the next planning phase, each one lets the attacker raise the area limit of a village area by one. Once a ninja is there, however, the defender can place a ronin there to wipe them all out. The defender deploys her markers as well, but it's a lot simpler. All available ronin must be deployed, and each area can hold only one ronin, barring one particular ronin special ability. Once both players are done, they reveal by lifting their screens. 
All markers on the planning boards get shifted onto the main village board. Ninjas go on the outskirts in the applicable spaces, while Ronin just sit inside each village area. Any ninjas the attacker didn't use just get put off to the side in her reserves. Next is the combat phase. First, the defender uses the special abilities of each deployed Ronin, if possible. Some abilities have specific requirements. For instance, Tosuke is the only Ronin who can occupy the same area as another Ronin, and in fact, the defender can choose how wounds from normal combat are divided amongst the two Ronin. Whereas Hayai has a, I'm sure I mispronounced that, has a warhorse, and if he ends up in an empty area after the reveal, he can quickly move to a contested or occupied area. And brave fencer Musashi gets to immediately remove a ninja from his area without it becoming a wound. After this, you resolve the normal combat. In every space with both ninja and ronin, each ninja is placed on the ronin's tile as a wound. If too many wounds are taken, the ronin dies and is out of the game. If any ninja are left over at this point, or were unopposed to begin with, they now get moved off of their space and occupy the village area, meaning they can now activate that area's special ability. For example, the watchtower lets the attacker deal one wound to every ronin adjacent to the watchtower area. The shrine lets you put a shrine marker on one of the ronin and lock their special ability for one round. The animal pen will keep one ronin there locked in place. And if you can control both fields, it counts as an extra area for the purposes of winning the game. After all of this is resolved, it's time for the end phase. All Ronin are taken off of the board, and the round tracker is moved up. Keep playing until all the victory conditions are met, either for the attacker or for the defender. The attacker will kill all of the Ronin or occupy enough areas, or the defender will kill all of the ninja or run out the clock. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Now, first and foremost, we'll start off with the bad. I am very disappointed that this game does not have an android, wisecracking samurai, um, and that they're not fighting against giant mecha flying bandits. But it is what it is. I'll, I'll take what I can get, okay? <laughs> okay, that's a Samurai 7 reference if you guys don't get that. Um, but aside from that, aside from <laughs> mild issues with the theme, uh, this is a very good game. This is a very, very interesting game. Um, I am inclined to like asymmetrical games. I just think it's a fascinating idea that because if you think about it an asymmetrical game is prone to disaster and it could end up disastrously where both sides are doing something completely different but you're trying to come together to play the same game but in games like seven run and it works very well because a lot of what you're doing feels the same the hidden placement and deployment of your forces so to speak uh but how what you have to do how you get to that point, the special abilities that you have, and um, the the different the balance between the two sides is much more interesting. So, for instance, the uh, in this case, the ninja clan, the attacker has just hordes of ninjas to throw. It doesn't care about them, whatever. They're just a resource essentially. In, th in that case, for the ninjas, it's more like a resource management game. Where can my resources go to be to get the most use out of them? Whereas for the defender, it's like every Ronin is precious. Precious, precious, precious commodity, if you still want to use the resource analogy. And making sure that they can survive, that they can live, that you can... I mean, part of the game is just guessing where the Ronins or where the ninjas aren't going to be. So you can actually have your healer guy, Tycho, I believe, um, heal some of your other people. Because it is so, so important to keep your Ronin alive to, to, against the waves and waves of ongoing ninjas. And, and, of course, for the defense, it's all about either the waiting game or being as efficient as possible taking out all those ninja and it makes it i mean this game it, there's no luck in this game this is purely trying to outthink your opponent and where they might want to go and what uh, the the different um, abilities they might want to activate that i think is another really fascinating part about this game is that not only does every single ronin have a different special ability but each of the different locations for the attacker only has a different ability. And that's also a very cool thing thematically. The ninjas have been coming to this village every year, so they know the lay of the land. And they know, like, oh, yeah, if I go to the watchtower, that's great. Just start picking off these Ronin. No problem whatsoever. Um, so I found that to be very interesting, both thematically and also gives you a wide variety of different things to do. As far as the balance of the game, honestly, I've only played the game three times. I've played it uh, two times from the defense side, the um, the Ronin, and one side from the ninja side. So I don't, I'm not going to presume to talk about balance over like a long period of games. I will say in uh, both of the games that I played, the defense ended up, uh, as a defense, the defense ended up winning. When I was in the defense, and this isn't any kind of indication of how well I play, but when I was in the defense, it was um, the ninjas who ended up, uh, or I, yeah, 
I ended up winning as the defense. I ended up winning as the ninjas. Um, and again, this is an indication that I'm like this amazing player. But uh, I don't know. It, it seems pretty balanced to me. It seems like you, this is one of those games you definitely need to know what you're doing ahead of time. The first game that I played, both I and the, the, my opponent were just like kind of like all over the place. Like, oh, wait, how does this work? It's not that it's a complicated game, but you need to know what all the different abilities do. And once you get over that, your second game will be very, very different. Now it's like, okay, now we got something going here. So I am interested to play it more. I'm keeping the game, and I'm, I want to play it more, and I'm interested in what they might change in the new edition. I don't know if they're going to change the artwork, but the game looks very good, too. Um, I like the subtlety of the artwork and where they have the indicators and have how to place the ninjas before they go into the village, potentially. Um, so I think that all works very well together. I just think it's a very clever game. If I had to come up with faults for it, um, I would say the fact that it is like a zero-sum game, that there is no luck to this, there's no like you know secondary rewards. If you have a really bad round, you have a really bad round. And that could actually be... That's why I might say the game might actually be more balanced in favor of the defense because um, the ninjas really are, have to be having a compiling amount of rewards piling up. You really have to be doing very well and from round to round to round. If you have a couple of really crap rounds where like you're wiped off the map, that's a problem. Uh, so something to keep in mind at least. Um, but overall though, any kind of minor hiccups about that or potential... I, I think the, the number of abilities in the game keeps the game fairly replayable, but... Um, I'd be curious if they're going to add more to it because that might be something of an issue. But those little things aside, don't really hurt the game that much. I think it's very, very good. I think if you like asymmetrical games, if you like the theme, which I think comes out fairly well, and if you just like this idea of like um, either tower defense in a sort, but mixed with the, some interesting resource management and action selection actions... I think you would definitely want to check this out, regardless of which version you want to go for. I don't have any details on the American version, so you'll have to check that out for yourself when it comes out. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a straight port, though, because it all looks pretty good. That is Seven Ronin, currently from Badger's Nest, soon to also be from Gray Fox Games. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.